Hi. As we uh, continue our discussion of GIMP, what we're going to do at this point is uh, get into a program that is not GIMP, but uh, means a lot to GIMP. Uh, it's called RAW Therapy. We're going to do some RAW file processing now. This is going to cover several videos. Um, what you have to understand is what is a RAW file. Um, so many people use the JPEG files that only come out of their camera. Um, you have to remember that RAW files are not found in many of the cameras, uh, usually only in the higher end, uh, the very high end point and shoots, and also the uh, high end, uh, or I mean the, uh, the uh, digital SLRs. Um, what RAW files are basically this. Um, they are the raw data that is captured out of the CCD or, or the image sensor. Uh, they're 12-bit images. Um, they contain virtually everything that is captured out of that sensor. Uh, these are then presented to the JPEG processor inside the camera, which says, okay, how are we going to make this a little bit smaller? We're going to cook it. We're going to, you know, compress this. We're going to compress that. We're going to throw out this. We're going to throw out that to make an image that is um, almost perfect, not quite, but uh, what it's going to do is it's going to process a lot of details that are lost. Uh, what you can do on a lot of these cameras is store the images in RAW format. If you take, for example, uh, Nikon has... Um, a Nikon has uh, what they call NEF files, and um, Canon has CR2s, and these are the raw images that are captured uh, in the camera. If you notice here, I have uh, the raw therapy screen open. Uh, very brief tour. What we have here is we have the uh, post-processing uh, profiles. You can load in a profile, use profiles that are inherent in the system, or load in custom profiles that uh, process, pre-process the uh, image, like let's say, uh, to include the majority of the processing that occurs for your particular camera, and then you can just tweak it, things along those lines. You can save these profiles, load these profiles, whatever. Here we have a uh, history window that is basically the undo feature of the program. We're going to show you more of that in probably in the next video we're going to get into. There's a lot to cover in this. Uh, what we can also do is we can select s snapshots. Let's say as you go through and you're doing 20 or 30 operations on an image, uh, what happens is um, every 10 operations you can save a snapshot. So if something goes west, what you can do is you can recur to that snapshot. You can uh, record those as the default snapshot name, like snapshot one, two, three, or as a snapshot name. Or you can remove those snapshots. Down here we have our file dialog for opening files. Um, this is our workspace. Here we're able to uh, hide the left-hand portion of the screen, or you know this is the history and the post-processing and so on and so forth, or make it visible again. Here we can uh, hide or save or, or restore viewing of our file dialog. This, um, what I should probably do now is load an image so I can show you what some of these other buttons do. Here it's decoding the file, bringing it in. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this fit button. Uh, this is basically your EXIF um, information on the camera. Uh, basically what the ISO was, uh, the focal length, the speed, so on and so forth. I mean the uh, f-stop, uh, the shutter speed, the focal length, um, the ISO speed, whatever. You can turn that on and off. This allows when the information or when when the image is larger than the screen without using the scroll bars, you can scroll it around with this hand. Um, here you're able to um, here you're able to uh, right here take um, measurements so that you can uh, do your white balance. Um, you can collect, select a gray portion on the screen and do your white balance on that. Uh, up here we have something that is extremely handy. Uh, this shows, first of all I'm going to turn this off because we're running into, okay. Uh, this shows right here um, any of the uh, 
portions of the picture that are lost uh, in shadow. Uh, this will show portions of the picture that are lost in highlights. So if I go into my exposure and I vary my exposure here to make it brighter, if you'll notice what turns black is uh, lost in the uh, highlights. And uh, if I click here um, and I've, I underexpose the picture, what turns black is, uh, or actually white, uh, is uh, lost in the uh, shadows. So um, what you can do is you can do that. Um, now I'll restore my exposure here. What we have here is we have a four level histogram where we can turn these histograms off and on. Uh, here we have our luminance histogram. Here we have our blue histogram, our green histogram, our red histogram, or we can turn them all on. And this is a live histogram. So like let's say if I go through and vary my exposure, if you notice the histogram changes as we uh, you know, vary the exposure or whatever. Okay, now what we have here is a set of transform uh, operations. And these transform operations, we can crop, rotate, distort, uh, distortion. They've got some unusual ones here. Um, basically what you can do is, um, uh, let's get into vignetting. Uh, what you can do is, you know, you, if you have a lens filter uh, on the uh, lens that's partially blocking the corners of the image, you can make them lighter. We'll get into that more later. Uh, you can also resize, you can crop, you can do various things. These are what's called the ICM color profiles here. Now you can uh, basically have an input profile, which is your camera, and based along the uh, the type of file that's inputting NEF or whatever, it's going to uh, input a default profile for like let's say the Nikon or a CR2 for the Canon or whatever. Or you can also have a custom profile. The working profile is SRB, RGB, but what you can also do is you can uh, select a different working profile. This is the profile that you'll be working on it with your monitor. Or you can create a custom profile and import that profile there. And you can also have an output profile. Uh, this one is set to R or sRGB. Um, what we have here is we can save these images. If we click the Save As dialog, if you'll notice, what we can do is we can save these as an 8-bit JPEG, an 8-bit TIF, a 16-bit TIF, an 8-bit PNG, or a 16-bit PNG. Um, the 16-bit uh, TIF, although GIMP will not use it um, at this point until the next version, I believe it's 2.4.6, um, what it will do is it will allow you to uh, save that image and then also as your JPEG where you're processing the color within uh, this within this program in true 16-bit and uh, then after it's all done then more than the 8-bit is more than adequate. Uh, these right here are rotate functions where you can rotate the image or flip it. Um, so what you can do is uh, do that. Uh, the scroll bars, you, I'm sure you can figure those out. Uh, and here you have a preferences dialog where you can set up the preferences for the programming, file browser, whatever. Um, more about that. So that's going to conclude this video. Um, please watch the next several videos on raw therapy and uh, what we will do is we will process these raw files and get you ready to go in GIMP with raw file processing. And I thank you.